here we go the substitution method now I want to emphasize that in the elimination method we looked at this and we said we use elimination when the X's are over the X's the Y's are over the Y's the equals are over the equals and the numbers over the numbers and that's not happening here nope 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 we've moved it another way to look at this is to say that in the, in the first equation we have 3x plus 2y is 29 and in the second equation it says x equals could have also said y equals the bottom line is that things are not lined up to eliminate instead because it says x equals here I can substitute for x now let's take a step back okay you go to a soda machine and you go to get a drink and it, let's just say that the drink costs a dollar exactly a dollar and you go to put your dollar bill in and it keeps spitting out the dollar bill it won't take the dollar bill what can you do to still get the drink out of the machine well you can look around at your friends and say hey who's got four quarters here for a dollar and because the four quarters is equal to a dollar, you can trade with your friend. He still has the same amount of money, or she still has the same amount of money. But you now have four quarters that you can put in the machine. And when you put in the exact change, out pops the soda or the drink, whatever you had just purchased. And our theme for inflation could have been $2, okay? Now, um, when we do substitution, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the X with what it's equal to. So again, notice the variables and the equals do not line up. They don't align. So X equals, in such a setup, when it says X equals like that, or it could have said Y equals, it suggests we go substitution. So I have 3X plus 2Y equals 29. That's the first equation. And I have X equals Y minus 2. That's the second equation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the first equation and say 3. Now, ordinarily, I would write an x there. And then plus 2y equals 29. So I haven't changed anything. The only thing is I didn't write the x there. Why didn't I write the x? Because the x is like the dollar bill. And I want to trade it for what it's equal to. Now, the dollar bill equaled 4 quarters. So I traded a dollar bill for 4 quarters. It could have been 10 dimes. But here, the x is equal to a y minus 2. So I'm going to take where this X should go, which is right here, and I'm going to trade it for the Y minus 2 that it equals. Hey, that was pretty slick, huh? Everybody's going to say, ooh, ah. So I traded for the Y minus 2 that the X is equal to, and now check it out. Doesn't that look like equations or an equation that we were doing back in like whatever, the second, third lessons of the year and that we've kind of stayed current with and practiced with our algebra review throughout the year and on our homeworks? Now you know why. Distribute that y, 3y minus 6 is e plus 2y is 29. Get my y's together because it's the same size, same operation situation. I get 5y minus 6 is 29. Add 6 to both sides. 5y is 35. Dividing by 5, y is 7. So once I've got the fact that y is 7, I can substitute it in. 7 minus 2 is 5. x is equal to 5. So with substitution, we don't line things up. We literally substitute just like four quarters for a dollar. And we literally take and put the Y minus two that used to be in here for being next to X in four X. It replaces the X. And after that, everything is pretty much the same all the way through. Okay, so let's have you try one. Go ahead. Stop and start. You know the drill. So, um, what we have here is the original equation. 5x minus 2y is 14. And instead of the y, because underneath it says that y equals x minus 4. Instead of the y... I'm going to put the x minus 4. See how I did that? So the 5x stays the same. The negative 2 stays the same. The equal stays the same. The 14 stays the same. But instead of the y, I put y's, what y is equal to. Just like the 4 quarters are equal to a dollar, I trade in 
the y for what it equals, which is x minus 4. And now I just solve this the same way we've been solving stuff for weeks. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. I notice that it's the same side, same operation situation. 3x plus 8 is 14, minus the 8 from both sides. 3x is 6, divide by 3, x is 2. Okay, so I have my x value. How do I get my y value? Well, you can plug it in either original equation, but what's really cool about substitution is it's usually super simple to find the missing variable. You just use the equation that says the other one equals, or in this case, y equals x minus 4. Substitute the 2. Hey, so we're kind of doing substitution all along there when we substitute the 2 in. y equals negative 2. Okay? Your turn. Go ahead. Little stop and start action on your end. Okay, so so my substitution here is for the b. I want to put in a minus two. So I'm going to leave the 3a alone, I'm going to leave the negative 5 alone, I'm going to leave the equal 0 alone, but I'm going to change that b, like the dollar bill, for the four quarters it equals. In other words, I'm going to trade the b for the a minus 2. So I get 3a minus 5 times the a minus 2. I know I kind of expected it to be down on the left there, but I put it on the right. So the 3a stayed the same, notice that. The negative 5 stayed the same, notice that. The equal stayed the same, notice that. The 0 stayed the same. But in place of the b, I put an a minus 2. Negative 5 times a is minus 5a. Negative 5 times negative 2 is plus 10. 3a and negative 5a make negative 2a. Plus 10 is 0. Minus the 10. Negative 2. Oh, I traded it to an x. should say a. Equals negative 10. Divide by negative 2. And I get a is 5. To go back and get b, b is the a minus 2, b is 5 minus 2, b is 3. Okay? So there are the correct values. All right. So we now bring ourselves to a word problem. So you're going to solve the word problem. This is about theaters and tickets and shows. So I put a little graphic there about the top 10 best Broadway shows ever. Not that... Not that I'm a big Broadway guy, but I did see Springsteen on Broadway. That was fantastic. Took my son to it. Boo cool bucks for those tickets, boy. Uh, and Steven Spielberg sat right in the front row. So uh, my moment with Mr. Spielberg. I asked for a Jaws 15 to come out, but I guess not. Okay, back to the problem. Uh, theater charges $12 for every adult ticket, $5 for every child ticket. The theater sold 130 tickets for the first showing of a new release. The total money collected from the ticket sales for that show was $1,280. Write a system of equations that can be used to find the number of child tickets and the number of adult tickets. How many of each were sold? Now, um, you have to set up the equations, solve it, and you have to decide, are you better off using the elimination technique or are you better off using the elimination technique? So get started with it. Let's see how you do. Go ahead, a little stop and start here so that we can see how you're doing. Okay, so first, this is the tricky part here. Every adult ticket costs $12. So if I do 12 times the adults and every child ticket was $5, plus five times the child, I have to get the total number or total amount of ticket sales, which is 1280. So once again, Every adult ticket was 12 bucks. Every child ticket was 5 bucks. And if you add in up that total amount of money taken in, it adds up to $1,280. Now, that equation I don't think is too hard for people to come up with. In my experience, people will get that one pretty quickly. The second equation is a little subtle. It just says the theater told... this. Is, by the way, this is where underlining is really helpful, and I should have done it here. You underline $12 adult tickets, $5 child ticket. That tells you 12A plus 5C. You underline amount of money taken in was $12.80. So that tells you that because the 12 and the 5 were money, that they got to add up to $12.80. 
The only other thing that's important here that would have been underlined is the fact that you sold 130 tickets. And it's not always obvious what to do with that 130 tickets being sold statement. But what I can tell you is there's two types of tickets that are sold. There's adult tickets and there's child tickets. So adult plus child has to add up to 130. Question, is this an elimination technique problem or is this a substitution problem? Definitely elimination, right? I have the A's over the A's. I have the C's over the C's, the equals over the equals, numbers over numbers. Um, I want to get rid of, what do I want to get rid of here? I can get rid of, I think, oh, let's see, which one should I get rid of? Uh, let's see, I think I'll get rid of the C's. So I'll rewrite the first equation, 12A plus 5C is 1280. And I'm going to multiply the bottom one by negative 5. So if I multiply the bottom one by negative 5, I get negative 5A, negative 5C, negative 650. Adding them up, I get 7A equals $630, dividing by 7, and I find out that there were 90 adult tickets sold. So if there were 90 adult tickets sold, what were the number of child tickets sold? Well, adult and child add up to 130, adults 90. So subtracting 90 from both sides, the child ticket has to be 40. Okay. All right. So those are some... Uh, examples we earlier of elimination technique then substitution technique then making your mind up which one is important now how do you decide which one is important well if they line up like if you get the X's over the X's the Y's over the Y's the equals over the equals and numbers over numbers the, the equal sign aligns the variables align we're definitely looking to go with elimination here on the other hand the variables might line up in the sense of the X's and the Y's, but the equal signs do not line up. So when you see that happen or the variables are not lining up, then you definitely want to go substitution. Okay. So that's today's presentation on elimination and substitution technique. Today is a quiz day. So you will have to take a quiz in a little bit. In the meanwhile, this ends today's video for the day or the videos for the day of the lesson and the only thing we got coming up left in class if you're in class at the moment is a quiz and if not then you take the quiz when you're happy and get to it okay see you later